Hi everyone, in the last video we we'll introduced Repolit, which is the tool we'll be using for this week's course. And in this video, we'll be looking at data types. We'll be looking at primitive, primitive data types and non-primitive data types. Primitive data types are data types that the people who coded Java decided the primitive data types for Java will be. So there are eight primitive data types. We'll be looking at eight of them. We have categorizing them, we have the numeric data types. So numeric primitive data types. So this includes the ints, which is for integer, integer values. We have the shorts, which is also for integer values. We have long, Also holds, this holds large integer values. We have floats, which is for floating points. Floating point values. We have double double, which is for double precision floating point values. And these are all the numeric primitive data types you have. So the keyword here is int. That's how when you want to declare a data type in Java and you want the type to be the primitive type int, use the keyword int and it holds integer values. Now we have the keyword shorts also for defining integer values where it has a smaller size. So the maximum number you can put into a shorts is just over 32,000. If you try a numeric value higher than 32,000, say you try 33,000, then your shorts cannot contain your number. Now for long, long holds large integer values. So you have large numbers that are integer values that you want to represent in a container, in a primitive container in Java, you use long. Now we have the floats. So if you have numbers that have decimal places or fractional numbers that you want to represent in Java, you use the floats or the double. Now both of them uh, are for representing floating point numbers. The difference is with double, you can represent almost double the amounts of digits after the decimal point than you can with the floats. So if you're looking for more precise representation of fractional numbers, you use the double primitive type. Now we have other types. We have the other primitive types, which we have char, so character values. So the char is used to represent character values. Now this is a single character which can be a single number a single letter and it is always represented by the single quotes. So if you have a value in a single quote in Java, that represents a character. Now we have Boolean. So 
through all false values. So this data type is used to represent whether a condition is set to true or is set to false. So if you're trying to represent something in two states, which can either be a true or a false, you use the Boolean in Java. And the last one is bytes. So we use bytes um, to represent data too. So things like you're trying to process um, inputs from users in Java. So that translates to bytes. We might not be seeing a lot of bytes in, uh, in the entire course of learning Android using Java or Kotlin, but it's good to have an idea that there's a data type called byte. Uh, we might be seeing it, we might not be seeing it, but it's used to process data. Now, a good thing to note there is that all the primitive data types that we've described all have keywords in all small caps. So you have int in all small caps, short in all small caps, long in all small caps, floats in all small caps, double, same thing, you have char in all small caps, boolean in all small caps, and you have byte in all small caps. Now let's look at non primitive. data types. The first one we'll be looking at is string. Yeah, I know I said primitive types are the types defined by the people who coded Java or the programmers of Java language itself. Yes, string was also added to Java by the programmers, but string, unlike the others, is classed as a non-primitive data type. So it's used to represent words, sentences, and it's represented, represented using the double quotation mark. So when you see a value in double quotation mark, that is a string. Now we have array. It's also uh, a non-primitive data type. Now this holds a collection of data. Now the array by default doesn't have a type. So when I say a collection of data, an array can be a collection of shots, a collection of integers, or int, a collection of long, a collection of floats, a collection of double, and all the other types. We have um, class. Now, when we define a class, like we have here, we have a class called main. Now, since non-primitive data types are types that are defined mostly by the users, which is us trying to use Java, we define this class called main. That makes it a non-primitive data type. And as we go along this course, we'll be defining a lot of non-primitive data types that we'll be using to solve problems as we move along in this course.